Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here, and I have a question for you. Do you stick to the colors you see in the reference photo, or rather do you change things around, make them more uh, perhaps interesting, or perhaps more authentic, or more you, or just more what you feel like in the moment? Uh, well, in this video, I wanna show you how I pretty much completely change most of the colors I see in the reference photo, and it will also relate to saturation, which I've been talking a lot about lately, and how to use it to your advantage to make more interesting works. So without further ado, let's take it to the table, I'm going to show you how I paint this one. So uh, this time I decided to show you the entire process real time. Uh, the drawing stage is a little faster and everything goes a little faster generally speaking. So uh, if you do want to skip to the painting stage, you can uh, search the bar. It's going to say uh, somewhere around. It's going to be linked the painting stage, first wash, whatever I call it. Um, but what I'm doing now is just establishing the main shapes. Uh, the scene, by the way, I believe it's from Russia. Uh, if I recall, it's called uh, Gachina. It's a priory palace maybe that's one of the keywords there so i don't really know exactly uh, where it is but i will link it down below you can check it out yourself uh, obviously and uh, yeah i'm starting to set up the uh, building the main building here um, again look at me go always from large shapes to small shapes and one of the main large shapes here is obviously the sky the foliage the ground and then the next thing thing is the, the buildings themselves so um, what you get here is basically a tra trapezius kind of shape, uh, trapezoid shape on the roof, and then you get just kind of a, a, a square on the um, front, the wall that's facing towards us. Now notice what I'm doing here. I'm dividing the left section of the roof into two sections, which you can actually see in the reference photo. Um, so they're kind of the same height, which is why I could do this. Uh, I'm going to add the, the, this tower in. Now what's important is not necessarily even the details within the buildings. What's more important is where do you place the buildings in the entire scene, because the subject here is more than just the building itself. A uh, major part of the subject is the landscape, the fact that it feels rural, there's this uh, small road that reaches to it. So uh, these are all things that are important to, to consider. Uh, and if you just paint the structure, like m very often I'll do, I'll just paint uh, an urban scene or landscape, then that's different. And that is something that uh, you can uh, approach a little differently. But here the placement is even more important. When you actually practice um, a focus on just the building, you have to maybe take your time a little more, get the different elements of it more accurately. But with that being said, that's all a part of the style stylistic choice. If you go for a more impressionistic style like I do, you can go a little looser, which I love, obviously. <laughs> a lot of my paintings are like that, most of them. Uh, so now I'm starting to put in the different details, elements. Uh, we have a couple of uh, chimneys there. Uh, then we're going to get in some of the windows, some of the dormers, uh, all of these small elements that um, help this make look like a structure that's believable. Now, here's the thing with perspective and placing all of these elements incorrectly. Uh, every small mistake you'll make uh, may uh, influence how real it looks, okay? And these things are noticeable. So when you see other people's work and you say, oh, this reads really well like a building, but then you look at your own work and it doesn't, that's usually the reason why. So what I would practice is just the building um, in trying to really understand the perspective there. It's very subtle here, so you can get away with a lot of fairly horizontal lines, not a lot of diagonal lines here, but you do have to remember that, the, for example, the wall on the left side of the building goes into a vanishing point in the distance. Everything that's parallel to it that goes away from us uh, will converge to that vanishing point, and all the details of the wall up front they go to a vanishing point on the right. Now, if you look at the, for example, the top edge of the roof and the bottom edge of the roof, they're at a very similar angle. The difference is so small and subtle because we look at it almost from the front, uh, but there is a slight difference in angle. And if you can capture that, you'll get it right. So again, forget about the entire scene. If you need to practice this, take a simple structure, even just a cube, try drawing it from different angles because essentially this is a cube then try adding more details to it like that. Uh, the, the rooftop that's a bit diagonal. I'm gonna show you uh, how it's done. I also showed you in one of my recent videos. Um, and yeah, that's, this is the main challenging section of the painting. The rest is a little more loose. The tree here can be a little looser. The road, obviously. Um, some small details. Maybe I'm considering adding people there. 
some of the windows that, that are left that I missed, some of the foliage that I missed. The rest is fairly simple. Now, the drawing does have to support the purpose of the painting. So aside from being the drawing, you want to know where to paint what. So if you look at the scene itself, uh, you'll see that we have a bunch of highlight, highlight areas. Areas that are a little lighter on the dormers, on the side of the rooftop, on the side of the wall to the left. Uh, all of these sections are things you have to take into consideration. Uh, when you're painting and to get an accurate drawing will help you with that. Now this doesn't mean the drawing has to be detailed but it does have to be accurate. Okay so now we're on to the first wash. Now here's the thing. The colors I initially wanted to you know use a normal color scheme but I'm really sick and tired of those bright blue skies and all of these colors that look very artificial. So what I decided to do is use the concept of a mother hue that I learned from Alvaro Castanet and have one color dominate the entire entire painting with variations. And what is that color? Can you guess? <laughs> it is yellow ochre. So no matter where you're going to look at this painting, you'll see yellow ochre in the sky, in the foliage, in the buildings. When you do this, and, and again, notice, I'm not using clean, pure yellow ochre, and I'm not covering everything with yellow ochre. I'm doing this in an interesting way. For any mix I do, I'm going to use a third yellow ochre, and the other two thirds or even 50-50 is gonna be a different color. So a little bit of the blue for the sky. So you get this beautiful muted gray. Um, you uh, using a bit more red for the, um, the rooftop itself. You'll see me now mixing in more red, uh, but still there is a third that is the yellow ochre. What this does is subconsciously, when you look at the painting, it reads like one thing that's related. Every part is related to the other parts. And this is beautiful. This is something I really enjoy doing. Um, and when you let go of realistic colors uh, and just, paint it the way you want or envision, there is a lot of value to be gained from it. Of course, I'd prefer that you will be able to match the colors you see if you choose to, to have that skill. But ultimately, if you're like me and that's the style you go for, it's going to be a much um, different and looser approach when it comes to colors. Okay. Uh, now, one more important thing. Look at the technique here. All I care about is painting around those highlights. Okay. And by the way, sorry if there's a bit of background noise from the TV. Um, it is on in the living room. Uh, so what I care here is what do I skip and what do I paint? Uh, and it's mostly, as I mentioned, details on the dormers, this left side of the roof, the left uh, sides of the walls, all of these things that are going to uh, stay fairly uh, white. Uh, they're probably, they can probably stay white, so I just leave them like that. Um, and uh, the rest, now, once I get to the foliage, it's all going to be covered, okay? Everything is going to be a little uh, darker. Uh, but, uh, again, still going with my uh, mother hue. It's going to dominate the entire painting, the yellow ochre. So what you see here, essentially, is blue mixed with some of that yellow ochre. And look at the beautiful sense of light we get here already. This is really nice. Now, on purpose, I didn't do wet and wet with the foliage. Um, yet, and I don't think I will at all. Um, I wanted to avoid that and have, have it have a defined shape, a clearly defined shape. Uh, but what I do do here is I add uh, a bit of interesting colors to the foreground. Because the foreground is so vast here, you get a yellow, you get a blue, you, you get you just get a lot of distance and depth and I wanted to, to enrich it with some interesting colors. I'll also put in a bit of red probably. And you see how these colors just create layers. Again, they don't have to mimic anything that's actually there. What I'm looking for here is to create some interest uh, because I'm going to have all of this grassy patch uh, with really nothing there. Barely there's the tree, maybe some you know very um, few details. So I have to enrich it with something. So notice how I spilled also some water. I'm going to spray some water with the spray bottle. Anything I can do uh, to just add a bit of movement and shape to this area now. Later on, obviously, I can do a lot of different things to it, but I do want the base layer to already have some of that interest there, okay? I put in this very strong blue, and I also spray a bit of blue all across the painting. I don't know, sometimes it gives it some movement, some interest, uh, just to have something in the foreground. And this is how it's dried. Um, and I believe that was really a good choice. And now we can move on to the foliage. Now, uh, I cut out all of the mixing, but 
I must have mixed for more than a minute there, just mixing, just trying to find out the right mix. What I wanted to do is get a very muted gray that's almost perfect, but still have a bit of um, a bit of a, something that will create a sense of depth. So it was originally a little warmer, and then I added a bit more blue to make it even cooler than it was. Okay, now this is still a fairly wet wash, but still the edges can dry fast, so you have to be careful. Uh, so you have to work your way. What makes sense for me is left to right here, because uh, top to bottom wouldn't make as much sense, because it's this thin, long strip of trees, basically. Uh, so I wanted to make sure nothing dries on me. What I'm doing is working around some of the highlights that I see, just like in the previous layer, um, working my way around the building. And later on, you'll see I figured out that uh, the building should be um, should pop a little more. So you'll see me doing something interesting. Okay, that's going to come later. But now you see I added a bit more blue to the mix. Um, just to vary it as I go along. I did want it to be a little more on the cool side to send it to the background uh, and have it as a backdrop for this uh, building structure, whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, you have to work sometimes rather fast. Now, because it's a small piece and I don't care about the foliage as much, it's kind of a backdrop, uh, I can afford these, you know, you see these uh, jagged edges that I leave on purpose um, to get some feeling of foliage, but it's a very stylized choice. It's a very stylistic choice. Um, the, this isn't really how the trees look there. And if, if you look at the reference, um, I deviated significantly from what it looked like. I'm gonna close the door, there's a lot of noise. Sorry about that, I hope it's better now. Um, so you see this corner that I was just working on, that's probably one of the most important sections here. Um, this is where um, the most, co the strongest contrast is gonna be between the, the structure and the background. Now notice how I sprayed some water. What I wanted to do originally was paint the background around the tree in the foreground, but then I didn't want it to be such a hard edge, so I just sprayed some water on it uh, to loosen it up. Uh, hopefully it will help me next. Uh, a lot of the things I do, I don't know exactly if they're going to work out right now, but I do know that they're going to help me later on. Now I'm adding the shadow under the tree, but I'm still not done with the foliage underneath. Uh, I, I will show you how I very gently glaze another layer on top, okay? Uh, you can do, you know, first darks and then paint the lights around them, it can work, okay? And you'll see this soon. Now I'm just charging it with a bit more blue and yellow, uh, and then a bit more red. A lot of it is just testing out things, figuring out how it will look, whether it's going to work or not, um, creating interest, you know, it's just the... The magic in this scene isn't the subtle color changes, nothing is too jarring, it's not super blue there and super red here, and there is a lot of um, a gentle feeling to it, and a lot of it is thanks to the, the yellow ochre dominating the whole thing, and a lot of it is, it is thanks to these experiments. A bit of yellow, see what it looks like, a bit of blue, see what it looks like. Now I'm going a little more green. Because what I want to do is represent the foliage near the bottom, okay? And I'm also going wetter because I don't want it to be as dark as the background. So you see me go, just putting in uh, those foliages for the uh, foliage parts for the foreground, mid-ground to foreground. Um, and also, one more thing here, negative painting around the road, okay? The road is lighter, uh, it seems, than the foliage. And by the way, the foliage is much darker than it appears. Uh, to be, if you take the photo, the reference photo, and turn it black and white, you'll see. Uh, this green that's very bright, you know, it looks very light, but it's actually not. So here I am going with a lighter wash around a darker wash, and I'm fine with that. See, nothing happens. It is possible to work first um, first dark and then add the light around that. Okay, it's something that can work. Um, and now all I have to do is add the, the section on the other side of the road, okay? So the section closer to the buildings themselves. Uh, I'm trying to mix a similar green. I don't care if it's a bit different. It's, it's different yellow. Uh, it's different um, grass patches, so it's okay. And because all of the colors here are already so muted to begin with, it wouldn't matter, okay? Now once I'm done with this, the next stage will, will be to work on the roof and add probably a bit of red to it. The trick is how am I going to add the red? And by the way, I'm going to make a connection between this patch of grass and the bottom, I believe, in just a moment. The trick with the rooftop is how do I 
add in that red in a way that is still feels here we go the connection uh, in a way that still feels like a natural part of the painting and that's the tricky part so a big part of it is to add yellow ochre as i've done so far um, but also you just want to make sure not to go too strong here so i'm going with a lot of water uh, some muted red um, i'm just going to test it out and see what it looks like um, starting from that uh, tower and you see it looks nice it looks good so I can work with that uh, and then I'm gonna just make my way from the top to the bottom now I have to darken the tower I have to darken the building what will happen with the background foliage once I darken these, these areas what's gonna happen to the contrast between them it's gonna become smaller or you know they're gonna be closer in value so that's a problem because I added the dark background and now I'm darkening the structure itself. So what gives? I mean, there, I'm gonna have a problem d d making a distinction between the two. So a couple of things. One, I'm avoiding going as dark with the buildings. So the background is gonna be ever so slightly darker. That's the first thing. By the way, look at the tree on the right. I love how it turned out. Now, the second thing, I'm gonna make a strong distinction with the hue, the color. So you see this is clearly a red. It's gonna stand out and actually make the background look a little more blue. Now there's also a third thing here that you're gonna see later. I'm gonna darken the background a bit. But I didn't wanna be dragged into darkening the entire background. So I'm gonna use a nice compositional trick to get the message across while not compromising on my plan. You'll see, it's really nice. So, because right now, look at the, the tower and the background, they're kind of similar in value. And what will happen once I start painting this wall on the front and on the s sides maybe even, I'm gonna paint them with a little more neutral gray, maybe a bit towards the blue. And then it's gonna make the contrast again with the background smaller, um, less significant. There, there's gonna be less of a distinction between the two. You'll see what I'm going to do in just a moment. Now, I felt like I could push the red a little more here, just because it's a more of a side section and it's in the shadow a little more. And I love that. It's my opportunity to indeed show some strongly saturated color. Again, everything is muted, but giving something for the viewer to look at that's stronger in saturation is a plus among all of this um, more dull and blended colors. So this is also another thing uh, you want to pay attention to and do if possible. Uh, so now I'm starting to mix this um, just for the shadow under the rooftop, just a very gentle mix. Uh, you see, I'm trying to get it a bit dry brushy. Actually, I think I'm gonna work on the wall at a later stage. Um, and we have more of these rooftops on the left. Um, these are gonna be similar to the right section, but I did try to make them just ever so slightly more muted. So a bit more blue, a bit more yellow. Um, the reason why is, that it's just a nice balance. You get the main rooftop, the largest one, it looks good, it's impressive, it has these beautiful red shapes on it. And then the roofs to the side, I don't want them to glow as much. I hope that makes sense. And I wanna preserve some of the contrast there too. Um, so yeah, so these are that. Um, there is the shadows under the chimneys that I thought I'd add. And obviously the shadows on the chimneys themselves. Um, but this is Initially, I thought it's going to be a more significant part of the painting, uh, but it manifested itself to be not as important. Sometimes you make, you know, decisions, you change things around more spontaneously. So now off to the wall. And again, what I'm doing here is decreasing the contrast, which can be a problem. I'm decreasing the contrast between the building and the background. Um, but it is necessary because this wall is darker and I need to put it in like that because uh, otherwise it just won't read as well. Uh, you can't you can't compromise here. This wall has to be darker, uh, but I'm still making sure to keep my wall my wash fairly um, transparent and very watery. Uh, the buildings on the left I can go a little faster. You see here, just going through them real quick. Uh, did some wet and wet to add a bit more value to them. Then picked up some of it. You have to learn how to do these things. I actually have a good video on that, on how to uh, manage the color and advanced techniques, I believe, that you add, and then you detract from it, you charge in, you remove it. I actually have a playlist for uh, beginners uh, and advanced techniques and exercises you should check out uh, if you're interested in that kind of a thing. Uh, it's just a way of uh, what's called rendering. You know, you, you try and find the right thing, and very often you won't find it on the first go, so you just add a bit more dark, 
a little more light. You, you keep at it until you find the right uh, balance. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so now I'm mixing a bit of a darker mix here to get all of these small details in. We have this cross up top. Uh, we have, and I have, I've been, I've been painting a lot of of uh, churches and structures like that in the last couple of years. I always, almost always enjoy these. Uh, one thing, the cross was a little too strong, um, so I picked it up with my finger. You saw, I just touched it to get rid of some of it, and now I'm adding all of these small windows. Now the trick here is to not go in too many details, unless you want to really bring them out, and that's not my goal here. You go, you go very weak and and fast. You don't mess around with these windows too much. You don't want them to be too uh, prominent. They're just a small feature to show that this is a building. So you see, so I'm being very careful. If it's too strong, I'm gonna get rid of some of the paint on a spare piece of paper and then come back and add it. Okay, it's a tight balance to keep with the um, what's it called the dry brush technique. Uh, but you will get it with time. Now this is good. You see it already acquires the, the form of a structure, which is the most important thing here. Uh, now as I go, I add a bit more darks to the rooftop. And uh, if you're looking at this and you're asking how did you get to that from, <laughs> from the reference photo, first, I don't blame you. But second, um, it's a matter of just experience. The more you paint these, and I would say the more you dare to uh, experiment, with these things, uh, you will find that you feel you feel comfortable uh, changing more and more things. So maybe one time you'll just go cover the whole thing up with a flat color. That will be your underpainting, and it's going to be different from what you see. But you decide, ah, I'm sick of sticking to the reference exactly as it is. I'm going to let go of it. Uh, there is um, plenty to experiment with, and I'm not even I haven't even started with all of the possibilities. So. I still have a lot to learn uh, of just trying and experimenting with new things. Um, so I really encourage you to do that. Now here's the smart part. I mixed a darker mixture because I felt like, again, the, the contrast got really uh, low between the wall and the rooftop and the trees at the back. But I didn't want to fall into the trap of darkening the entire background because I actually love its value. So what I'm going to do is darken a small section and then use my water sprayer to spread it out, maybe some tissue to pick it up and blend it. You see, so I'm just helping it move. What this does is it gives me the contrast I wanted, but it's not taking over the entire background and it's a perfect compositional means just to get the contrast where you want it to. And you see, I'm picking up some of the uh, paint to keep a blended edge. A tissue can really help with that. Uh, so I gave it the contrast it needed, but I didn't compromise the entire background. Okay, and now you as the viewer, you're attracted to this high focal point of high contrast. You're attracted to the, to it because it's so dark and it's strong there. Um, so your mind and eyes understand, oh, okay, so this is a structure and behind it are a bunch of trees and you understand everything still reads as trees, but you get the contrast in. You see, so if you feel like the contrast is too weak, but you don't want to cover everything, well, who says you have to cover everything, okay? You really want to examine your preconceptions and figure out if the way you think is the only way possible to do something, is it? Not necessarily. Um, and think outside the box. Very often I'll just choose one point of contrast and that'll be enough for the entire painting. Now I do want to help it move a little more, so just spraying some water. Uh, loosening some of the paint, that's basically what's going on here. The, the spray bottle is magic, I really recommend you uh, use it. Now one of the main issues we're left with is the foreground. Right now there's nothing there, so I really have to think about what do I want to include there. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going fairly spontaneous with it, uh, and by the way I'm adding some fruit for the tree. I don't know why it looked like, you can see some uh, oranges or something like that in it, uh, and I did want to add it in, so to get it to work with the entire painting I just used some pure, uh, pure red and pure blue, uh, very dark, um, because it's not out of the tube, it's from my palette. Uh, and I actually really like the way it looks. So this is one more thing that we'll add to the foreground. We got this tree. I added spontaneously, you saw the tree on the left as well um, that I wasn't planning on in the beginning. And then we get some people on the road that I don't even think I'm going to add. Uh, but I do want the, the rooftop and some details on that. Uh, but for the, the road in the foreground, what I'm going to do is just add a bit of a fence uh, around it. 
uh, up front and behind it. And I think that's going to be enough. I think it'll look really good. Um, it wasn't even something I planned on, but spontaneously it seemed like a good idea. Uh, now you see all of these details of the sh uh, shingles or whatever it is, the pattern on the roof. I love these kinds of roofs. And this red is really nice looking. Um, uh, so yeah, I wanted to get some of that in. And by the way, there are some subtle uh, areas of shadow on the rooftop. For example, uh, notice how the part that is beveled more towards us has a shadow on it. And then as you get to the edge of the roof, it gets a little lighter right next to the bottom dormers. I didn't get that in at all. You know, it just wasn't as important for the impression I was trying to achieve. Um, but I think I could incorporate it really nicely into this one, by the way, if I wanted to. Uh, I just forgot or haven't thought of it. And here's the shadow under those same dormers, so that's really nice. Um, just getting the building to be as finalized as I can uh, before I'm left with the ultimate task of tackling the foreground, uh, which is again going to be just a series of fences. So here we go. I wasn't planning on uh, but I just felt like this was initially supposed to be a, a grass blade. And then I was like, hmm, this looks like a good spot to add a fence. So here we go. And it's an imperfect countryside rural fence. So the posts are a little wacky. Um, and that's a really nice look that I really like. So just a bunch of red, blue, yellow to get this dark value. And uh, it always surprises people that I produce these dark values with my uh, three primary colors, but it does work, like I showed you in one of my latest videos on how to desaturate. And I think it looks beautiful. So I'm gonna add another one behind. And with that, actually, we're gonna wrap it up. This is the end of the process. So here we are, final result. I hope you like it. Again, I went for something a little more subdued, a little more subtle. Uh, I just thought of mixing it up a little. It was really important for me not to go as dark as I went here all throughout the background, but rather use it as a compositional means. I think that's the main lesson, by the way, to take from this one. And I already signed it, and now we're gonna remove the tape together. Uh, I know a lot of people want to see that end result with the clean frame, with the clear borders. That's usually how I'm posting recently also on Instagram and also sorts of other places where you definitely want to visit if you want to see the end result of many of my paintings uh, up close and clearer pictures than video. Uh, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this process. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And now let's wrap it up face to face. So I really hope you enjoyed this one once again, and I want to thank you for joining me in this uh, tutorial. Now, I really have changed quite a lot. Sometimes the, the clear blue perfect sky kind of annoys me and I do want to change things up. Uh, and this was a perfect example of that. Uh, and very often, if you find some references non-inspirational, it's worth thinking about whether it can become inspiration if, if inspirational if you change something. So I really want you to have that option in mind. Don't feel like you're bound to the reference photo and feel free to change as much as you want, okay? Now I wanna once again thank you for watching. If you enjoy this and you wanna learn how to paint like me, I would really, really appreciate if you check out my frustration-free watercolor course. The link is always in the description box below. I would also really appreciate if you leave a like if you enjoyed this one and a comment down below and also subscribe if you still haven't. I heard some people were unsubscribed. That sometimes happens. So make sure you're still subscribed uh, and hit the bell button. That lets you know whenever I post new videos and I do post quite a lot of them. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will catch you again in the next vid.